Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in the world you're watching me right now. This is Mohsen, and welcome to Mohsen Kimete. Once again, <clears throat> I've missed this, uh, saying this statement so much. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful response for uh, season one. In the past month or so, I have had a lot of friends and family members coming uh, to me and asking me when will the next season of Mohsen Kimete be released. Most persistently, my mother. So I guess here we go. Uh, I'm back with another series of five episodes this time. To be honest, uh, I did struggle this time to come up with a theme for the season. So if you followed the first season on personal leadership, you would know that I started the series as a self-learning mission. I really wanted to seek answers to a lot of questions, which I would not think about on everyday life basis, for instance, what is humility to me? Why is it important to be kind? And so on and so forth. So that was sort of a personal mission. And I guess I succeeded in knowing myself better in that process. So if you're interested in uh, watching those videos, you can still watch them on Greenbox Facebook page or on the YouTube channel, uh, The Gold Twins. Right, so coming back to this season's theme, uh, we need drum rolls. <laughs> the theme is sustainability. Now, it's all about going to be green, and I want you all to be part of this process and come along and see what is the next thing I'm curious about or passionate to talk about. And after a lot of deliberation, this is something I thought I really want to talk about this. I want to talk about sustainable lifestyle. I want to talk about environmental concerns. I want to talk about my passion for sustainable development and hopefully try to send some of it to you as well. So now I know it might sound boring or you may feel, what do I have to do with this? Trust me, this is a question every other person ask themselves when it comes to sustainability or technically jog, technical jargon words like sustainable development or why do I have to be concerned with environment when I have to feed my family, when I have uh, to complete my degree on time. I have so much going on in my career and personal life. I don't want to take stress about the planet also. Right. But you need to trust me here, you and you only are the person who has everything to do with it. We need to debunk this myth that you only have to save the planet if you are an environmentalist or you know something about it. Please note, we are in a state of planet emergency. And if you don't care about what is happening to the planet itself, Maybe you care about what's happening in your backyard. So especially if you look at Pakistan, Pakistan is one of the world's most water stressed countries. It's the sixth most populous country, but equally ranked sixth on the climate risk index, which basically means that if, if climate change gets worse, we will be first few countries to face adverse effects. Uh, Lahore and Karachi, are already few cities in the world which have the worst air to breathe. Our rivers are heavily polluted. Most of the aquatic life is dead in some of our rivers. Flash floods are rampant every year. These natural disasters are increasing rapidly and are expected to increase further in the future. But the key question is, and the reason why I'm trying to talk to you about this is, what is 60% of the population doing about it? Yes, people like us, the young people of Pakistan. According to a UNDP survey, 40% of you young people think that the future of the country is bleak or not so good. That's quite alarming to me. I really want hope to sustain. And I guess the best way to do that is start improving oneself. So through the ripple effect, we can try to reach out to other members of the community, especially our parents, uh, our siblings, our friends and peers, to see if oh, some of us would start improving our lifestyle for the better. I'm pretty sure uh, 
the effect is going to just uh, grow and uh, sustain itself. Right, being so, I've I've kept I'm keep uh, I'm saying the words uh, sustainable lifestyle or sustainability. What does it really mean to be sustainable? Simply put, sustainable lifestyle is trying to live a life which is less harmful to the planet, and you have enough resources for the future generations. These are two basic uh, elements of uh, sustainable lifestyle, at least to me. Now, you might hear this and you'd be like, yeah, but nobody wants to be that greedy. Of course, we want to leave a planet that is uh, less harmful uh, to us and for the future generations. But we're not doing that. We are in a state where we require almost two planets like Earth to sustain. But there's only one planet and there's only one you. And there's a whole lot of many years, hopefully, that you will live and sustain. So how do you make yourself capable enough or the community around or the environment around yourself well suited enough for living a efficient and better life. So most of the Save the Environment guides or uh, articles I read online, they're a very good guide in understanding uh, how to start living a sustainable lifestyle. So why did I decide to create a series around this? I could have simply shared uh, an article with you and that would have been it. But in my experience, I've seen a lot of these tips and tricks are not well suited to Pakistani lifestyle. For example, uh, one way to cut down your carbon footprint is to take public transport instead of driving car. I'm pretty sure there's not a single person, in, at least in my social circle, who would do that purposely, probably because the public transport system is not that great or something like, uh, do online shopping instead of taking a trip to the market. But you know the online payment system is not well developed yet and is still uh, developing in Pakistan. So most of the people prefer shopping in person. So a lot of such tips do not really apply to uh, a middle class or a higher upper middle class person in Pakistan. Uh, so in the next two episodes or so, I will give, try to give you examples of how we can fit sustainable living in our daily lifestyle. I have tried to identify little things we can start doing to change for better. Now, there's a word of, for, of caution here. Nobody's asking you to prove a point by doing so. You are doing it for yourself and your future generations. If people get encouraged by your actions, well and good. But don't be pain in the ass and force people to make these changes because that's not going to sustain. Let them make these choices consciously. And you will see that once they, once you start doing it, people would be encouraged to do the right thing as well. I guess the next obvious question is where do we start? If I won't tell you where to start, I'm pretty sure our Desi parents or uh, father especially would tell you where to start. Like since my childhood, we've heard this switch off the lights or electronic appliances if you, if not in use, build in a bab dega and sort of stuff, you know? So we are pretty much uh, used to listening to all this, but how much do people apply this in their daily life is another questionable thing. I have so many friends uh, who have literally never switched off their laptop or chargers are always uh, in the power socket and the switch is on, even if something is not being charged. So being a little considerate here can save definitely some money, but also be good for saving energy and saving the environment in general. So these are some of, at least in terms of uh, energy, uh, conservation, we all have in place very important, little but very important role that can help uh, solve the energy crisis in the country ultimately. Uh, I can see there is a question for me before I go to the next use. How does Greenbox uh, help achieve uh, SDGs, especially in regards to climate change and sustainable lifestyle? 
So Greenbox is a youth engagement lab. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, give young people the knowledge, skills, and experience to generate solutions for uh, climate change advocacy and adopting sustainable lifestyles, as we really believe that young people are the forefront runners of the uh, uh, green movement, and they need to be uh, accordingly uh, given the resources and skills to do so. Right, coming back to, I hope that answers your question, coming back to water use. Now with summers almost here, long cold showers are definitely going to be on your list. Having lived myself in 50 degree Celsius temperatures, if someone tells me not to take shower twice or thrice a day, I would probably be pissed and throw some verbal diary at them. But you know, if you usually take 10 minutes bath, uh, once a day, you can now take three minutes, quick showers, thrice a day or something. It's all about consciously making a decision and managing the resource. I usually have a small sound clock, which I put when I go to the bath, or if you are a bit tech savvy, you can put a timer on your mobile and uh, uh, ideally you should be more than clean in three minutes, quick shower. So this is something you have to consciously decide to uh, undertake. Similarly, sorry. Similarly, you need to be smart when brushing your teeth, shaving, doing wazoo. Don't waste water. It's a precious commodity and you only would realize the value of it when the well is dry. I usually carry, I've borrowed this from a friend, I usually carry uh, a coffee mug or a water uh, this uh, reusable bottle so that uh, I don't have to buy the water bottle again and again. I'll discuss about it in a bit. Now, you might do all that, but in Pakistani homes, the biggest water use is not, water user is not you usually. It is your house help or domestic staff. This is something I really want to talk, uh, wanted to talk about uh, uh, to you is it's your responsibility to pass on this message and politely train your domestic staff or house help uh, regarding efficient water use. Often I see drivers and house ladies watering garden in the summer evening and leaving the water pipe on for hours or washing the car for hours. We simply cannot afford it. We have to start changing our approach towards using water on a daily basis. Maybe it's it's not that expensive yet, so we don't understand, but it's a highly subsidized commodity, and we need to understand that the, uh, it's, a, it's, the, it's, it's a resource that's diminishing at an alarming rate, and we really need to do something about it. Pakistan is already and will be severely affected by drought-like conditions in the coming years. So it's your responsibility and my responsibility to not just reduce our water consumption, but also encourage it across our community or at least in our household. And especially to, uh, let those people know who use it a lot more uh, than you do at your home. Those who wash clothes, those who wash dishes, those who clean your car or you clean your car, be conscious about not washing it more than five minutes or something. So making these decisions is really important. Right, second biggest culprit I've identified in our unsustainable lifestyles is plastic use, especially single use plastic or using it for one time. You must know that a plastic item takes usually thousand years to decompose in a landfill. And the plastic bags you use every day usually takes between 10 to 1,000 years to decompose. Usually 100 years of a small bag. Would you live until then to see for just one bag you use, where did it end up? And while plastic bottles can take up to 450 years or more. So next time you want to drink your Nestle mineral water or uh, some drink, Maybe consider installing a filter at home and refilling your bottle 
uh, something like this when needed because the plastic bottle ain't going anywhere. I often think people, the biggest reason for this is out of sight, out of mind, is the root cause of all this trouble. Imagine if there was a big iceberg of these plastic bottles lying in your backyard. I guess that would really haunt us. And uh, that haunting us is not, not, not no more there for us at least, but it's still haunting the fish and other aquatic life in rivers, seas, and oceans. Every other day, you might see on news that animals are found with plastic waste in their tummies. And please don't worry, it is coming back to you. It's not going to just stay in the oceans or seas. The fish you eat then is accumulated with all these poisonous chemicals. And, uh, well, mess with the environment and it messes back with you. So the best way to reduce your plastic waste is to keep reusable bags. And in the UK, it's quite easy to get one big uh, sorry, <laughs> one big uh, reusable bag. And if it's reusable, it will say at the end of it that it's reusable or something. And they highly encourage you to buy this because you do not have to pay the plastic uh, fee or to ch uh, the charge every time you go and buy stuff. So similarly, you know, there's so many ways that you can reduce your plastic waste usage. You can have... Uh, uh, I have a friend who has created a personal mission to audit waste they produce every week. So it's really helping them identify and be more little, uh, be more conscious about little ways to which waste reduction uh, can be done. So in the UK, as I told you, you pay additional fee for uh, or charge for plastic bags. So people would avoid buying them. If you're in a country or province where you still do not have to Face a lot of money, or is it free and you just don't care about it? One effective way is to find yourself for any bag or bottle you buy which is not needed. I have done that uh, in the past and it has really helped me become more conscious about uh, this because now I feel a sense of guilt if I uh, buy plastic bottles or bags for just one time use. Uh, one way to encourage this is to do it with your friends and family, and you might uh, be surprised that someone might get rich in the process because one of you would really not care about the environment and give you enough money to maybe buy a burger or something. Now, I often hear people say, don't worry, it will be recycled or uh, it will be sent for recycling. Not many people know that only 20% or less waste gets recycled across the globe. Recycling is not the solution. Rest of that waste is still out there in the air you breathe, the water you drink, the soil you eat from, it's all there. So the best solution is not to generate it in the first place. Uh, you might have seen three R's everywhere. Uh, on environmental uh, conservation messages, reduce, reuse, recycle. Reducing uh, through not consuming in the first place, reusing when possible. For instance, I'm reusing this bag whenever I get a chance or I'm reusing this cup whenever I get an opportunity. Similarly, recycle. Now, not every item can be recycled. So then there is another way, it's called upcycling. Uh, upcycling is a process in which you creatively transform something or a waste material or a byproduct for uh, making something different and possibly better. For example, your furniture or something. Trust me, ask your mom about it or your mother. And Pakistani mothers are well trained in upcycling a lot of material. Remember the Danish cookie box, which is now a house for all the buttons and stitching material in your home. Yeah, exactly that. And if you come from a Punjabi household like me, and you, if you tell your parents to throw something, they will possibly tell you uh, sort of, uh, sort of uh, statement, which means throw us out too if you think we are too old as well. <laughs> so 
these are some of the little tips which I have identified in uh, a Pakistani life uh, style, which we can start to incorporate. But there's so much more that can be done. In the next week's episode, I will uh, provide such more tips around uh, how we can uh, develop sustainable lifestyle in our daily routines. But I'll also talk about the concept of minimalism. So I take a lot of pride in being a minimalist. But what does that mean? We will discuss in the next episode. Right, so I've given you a lot of food for thought in this episode. And uh, I really hope that uh, you might uh, start applying one or two things in your daily life. And that would mean a lot, not just to me, but to the planet as well. Until then, take great care of yourself. And if you have any feedback, please feel free to write to Mosin at the gbox.org. Happy Easter to all those who are celebrating and have a great weekend. Bye.